Yeah, it's a dream come true. I mean, beginning of December, they said 30 days he has to live. And I thought, he's always wanted to see me ride this race for him and his colours. And I haven't yet had a winner in his colours. I've had many of tries. But so today to do it and him be here, get him here, it's just a dream come true. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jan Hampson, I'm Brodie's mother. I, I'd say when Brodie was about five months old, Kerry had her in her arms on a pony. I'm Callum Hampson and I am Brodie's brother. Oh God, worst thing she's ever done to me. Uh, made me go up the yard when we were young, uh, made me muck out horses at like 5 a.m. before we went to school. So from there, and then even growing up, she had always had this fascination. It just, I mean, it was never gonna be that really. It just kind of happened with Sally Rand, or I expect you've heard of Sally that was in the army with my husband. Hi, I'm Sally Randall. I am the assistant trainer to Fergal O'Brien. Um, I've known Brodie for a long time. I'm like her second mother. So my first memory of Brodie would be, I had done my army career, just the basics, and uh, the basic five years. And I'd got into racing because of the military races at Sandown and I wanted to leave the army to have a go at racing. I went to college, like I said, for one or two weeks. I hated it. I said to my dad, I come home. I said, Dad, I'm, I literally, I'm just going to join the army. We get a call one day. What's Brodie doing? Obviously, she's fallen out of college, hates it. She wants to go in King's Troop. So she probably, as soon as she started training racehorses, she probably thought, I know who should be coming to work here. And it was just literally going to be just to go and help out and see how she got on, give her something to do. And um, the next thing I know, she's, um, I'm racing, I'm doing a point to point. And we looked in the planner and the 20th of March, novice riders race at Garnons near Hereford. And I said, there you go, we'll run, we'll run her there for you. I'm walking around the point to point thinking, so how many times do we go around here? And what, is that the finish line? Like, absolutely clueless, but, um, yeah, Sally had me on this filly called Rich Nomad. She was my first ride in the point to point and I managed to win it. My saddle slipped like two out, so I had like three stone of lead. Um, but yeah, I just about held on. So no, it's, it's a good start. I went to Fergal's to watch his string school at, when we were, he was at Nigel Twist and Davis's. And um, they had a lovely mare called Jenny's Surprise, real stayer, loved heavy ground. And, she was running the next day at Bangor and I remember it again just like yesterday that the horse jumped, I watched her school and just as she jumped Fergal got a message saying Bangor abandoned so I just walked along and thought about it and I just said what would you enter it in the her in the Royal Artillery Gold Cup Jen is surprised she'd be perfect it'll be heavy ground so he asked the owner and the owner said yep yeah, enter Mark leased the horse so it ran in his colours and obviously dad had moved into the hospice um, before Christmas and they hadn't given him long to live but he said to me himself he said I will be watching you because he knew I was going to be planning to ride in it the first time and he said I will be watching you ride in that race and it, even for him to actually be there was amazing because we never thought we'd get him there and they did, did say just before Christmas he wouldn't He'd never be alive then. Um, and obviously, they didn't say he'd be living till that long, but the hospice were amazing. And um, he really picked up and managed to stay strong until the race day. So I picked him up from the hospice with mum and drove him there. It's just his usual self, his usual happy, bubbly self. Me and him were arguing on the way there that he wanted to get out and go and buy some fags. And I was like, no, because you're not walking here. And <laughs> We were having arguing on the way there, I remember it. Flag is raised. They're now being called forward. Walking in. And uh, they're off for the 2016 running of the Royal Artillery Gold Cup. They race over three miles, and last year's winner, Cowards Close, is the first to begin. Jenny's surprise is also prominent as they rise at the first of 22 fences, and they're all safely over. A little slow at the back of the field was high kite. They'd gone off hard, and I don't know if you, you guys like know Sandown. If you, you jump the railway fences on heavy ground, 
you can't send a horse from there, it's way too far away. So Brodie was in like a really bad force and she was just plugging on. Final six fences, on now towards the first of the railways. Coward's Close will just touch down in front, joined by Clomban and Lad. Towards the inside, Newton Thistle. Back in fourth, Jenny's Surprise. In fifth place now is Irish Thistle. And then in but they kicked after the railway fences. And I just thought, wow, she's going to get placed, and that's good. And it's Newton Thistle and Harry Wallace just have the lead over Oz Wedmore. And Coward's Close in second place. Back to third is Jody Soul on Combat and Lad. In fourth, Mark was Brody next Hampson to me. On Jenny's and surprise. I was getting very in excited. Place, and he was like, um, he was like, she was sort of creeping up, she was quite a way back, creeping up, and he was going there and going, come on, just get third, just get third, that would be great, just get third, Brody. The third from home in the Royal Artillery Gold Cup, and still little between the duelling leaders, it is Newton Thistle, who now claims a clear lead of just over a length. So off she goes, turn for home, jump the pond fence, turn into two out. back to the rest, as they come towards a second from home, Newton Thistle now goes clear by four lengths. To Cowards Close in second place, a long break back to the third, who is now Jenny surprise. And the front One horses more. started to tire. And believe it or not, Mark was well enough that day to be brought to the races out of the hospice. This kills me a little bit. Right, anyway. Sorry guys. He comes down towards the 22nd and final fence in the Royal Artillery Gold Cup and he's clear by five lengths, very tired, his coward's close and running now is Jenny Surprise and Brody Hampton and she still has every chance, that's a hundred yards to go and here comes Jenny Surprise, lifted home by the crowd, Brody Hampton and Jenny Surprise for an emotional win in the Royal Artillery Gold Cup. It was Jenny Surprise. It was just Newton absolutely Thistle, insane. It was the most like slow motion thing I've ever had anything to do with in racing because like time stopped for that last furlong. So it was, it was just a really insane day. I think my, my heart was absolutely going. I was, <laughs> I was just trying to focus on what was going on. I was trying to take photos, but um, yeah, that was, it was really, really cool to watch. And I'd say um, like Brody was telling me how when she was up there and like everyone was else was shouting go on Brody like the, the people competing against her that's that's yeah that's pretty emotional. I think I just ran across the track like literally not to the track ran across and just everyone was just screaming it was oh Sally was in tears leading her back in and it was just well we just didn't expect it to happen at all I mean how? <laughs> I just remember like coming back up the walkway, Sally like running at me, bawling her eyes out. <laughs> Everyone was bawling her eyes out to be fair. I think even if I was just a spectator, I would have been crying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I remember before we came back into the winner's enclosure, we were just, I said to the girl leading me up, just walk around here where they wash them down for two seconds, just looking to make sure my dad was in there when we come in. But um, yeah, I remember walking back in, the smile on his face. Just, I think he was the only one that wasn't crying in the place. <laughs> it was the best thing that ever, ever could have happened. I mean, we, you have never been so proud as I was that day. And for her father to be there, so to get in there is a massive achievement. Never dreamt you were going to win the race. Never, not at all. Just, I mean, what happened, I don't know. I don't know. Well, someone will help me over that line anyway, because I definitely didn't look the winner. But the fact I managed to win on that day in his colours, it's just incredible. Yeah.